breaking in new shoes today. Uh, the Squamas from La Sportiva. I'm sponsored by La Sportiva, so all my shoes are La Sportiva. Um, I thought this would be a good opportunity to just talk about how you choose rock shoes and give you a message that I hadn't really thought about that much before, which is that it's maybe not a good idea to base your rock shoe choice purely on what your favourite climber wears. So I guess there's a hierarchy of how you go about choosing rock shoes and the fit with your foot comes above everything else. <laughs> if it doesn't feel comfortable, then it's just not going to work. Um, you can take the pain for so long, you can try to break them in. Occasionally this might work to a degree with a very soft shoe. Most of the time though, it doesn't work. It's not sustainable. You'll just hate the shoes. They'll probably make your footwork worse as well. So number one is to get a shoe that fits your feet and that will discount a good proportion of the shoes that are out there on the market straight away. Um, I have quite wide feet. Um, a good number of the La Sportiva range are just a little bit too narrow for me, uh, such as the Futura, even the Miura Velcro, which I really love, but it just, it's just a tiny bit too narrow, so I can't wear them. These, I'm really glad to say, uh, seem to work for everything. Uh, they're my preferred shoe for bouldering. They're my preferred shoe for trad, alpine, multi-pinch, uh, for sport climbing, for everything. And that is absolutely brilliant. It's really lucky to have a shoe that works for everything. It's not that often that you, you come across one. These are, I don't really like a super stiff shoe, but I definitely don't like a super soft shoe either. These are just somewhere in between. They're supportive, they're a bit turned down, so you've got a lot of power. Um, but they're flexible enough that it's not like, super rigid. You can get them cinched up really tight for heel hooking so that you can pull a lot of power through your heel. And they're also excellent for toe hooking with this soft rubber on the top. So I love these. But um, that's not to say that if I could magically make all the rock shoes in the last Sportiva range fit my feet perfectly, that I would necessarily wear these all the time. In fact, I don't really wear them all the time anyway. Sometimes, where the Otakis, which are rather stiffer. Um, they actually don't fit my feet as well as the Squamas, so they're not quite as comfortable for long pitches. Otherwise, I'd probably wear these for trad more often, because they're just a little bit stiffer. But actually, what I wear these most for is when I'm climbing on steep overhanging terrain, like on my board here, or um, very steep bouldering, where the footholds are small, but they're very uncut. They're very positive, but just tiny and you can just get a huge amount of power through a really small space with these. So that's why I wear them. And I also wear the solutions sometimes. Uh, these are a little bit softer, softer than I would normally wear, um, but I really like them for indoor routes and just occasionally for reasons that I can't really put into words that on some moves, on some boulder problems, they just feel better. For example, um, I had these back out the other day when I was working at um, an INA sport climb with a heel hook and it's quite a big heel hook but you really need to get so much weight through it and it just so happens that the slightly stiffer heel of the solution compared to the squammer just worked better. Another example was when I was climbing a boulder problem called Catalan Witness to Fitness, uh, an 8B plus in Spain uh, during the winter there. It had a, a toe hook right before the crux move that was really crucial. Um, in fact, it was the crux move and I just found that I could get slightly more purchase with the solution toe than with the squamma toe, even though most of the time I actually prefer the squamma toe very slightly for toe hooking. So I can't really explain in a rational way why that is. It just is on certain moves. And so that's why on a trip I have all the pairs that fit my feet go into my bag uh, so that I know I've got something that works for any eventuality whether it's a particular type of heel hook, toe hook, they're often the ones that require a special rock shoe choice um, or something a bit more stiff, a bit less stiff or just anything. So when you see a well-known climber on YouTube or something and they're wearing a certain rock shoe type, you can make an inference that if they're choosing that for their project, that it's unlikely to be a bad shoe. They're just not gonna wear it if it is. Um, rock shoes are just such an important piece of equipment that you just can't really tolerate something that is not suitable. So you know it's not going to be bad, but the question is, will it fit your feet? So you have to kind of keep a bit more of an open mind about uh, a handful of rock shoes that you should try. One thing I would say though, that is it's no coincidence that uh, there are certain types of shoes that 
many uh, good rock climbers will wear just because they are really solid models. They tend to be models that last in the market for many years, sometimes even many decades. They're very famous. Um, the Miura is a good example of that. Even though I don't generally wear that shoe because it doesn't fit my feet well, I recognize that it's a brilliant shoe and it obviously works extremely well for some climbers. The Solution is another e example of that. It's been around for a good while. Um, many, many climbers love it and use it for all type, different types of climbing. So you can kind of be confident that if this fits your feet, and you like this type of shoe, it's probably going to be a good choice. Uh, I suspect that this one is going to last as a model because it's that good, uh, but that's just my bias because I like it personally. Uh, that's not to say that that would count for everyone. I guess the most important message of this vlog is go to the shop, try on everything. You might put on one pair that you just put it on your feet and instantly you go, oh yes, that feels good. That's the number one thing that you want. And then beyond that, everything else is kind of secondary. Uh, but beyond that, once you have a, a small group of shoes that you know fit your feet, then you can start to make choices based on what other climbers do, um, what the characteristics of the shoe are, etc., etc. And I would still encourage you to, if you can, to try and have more than one pair, um, to get used to using different pairs for different things. And also, if you can manage it to have different sizes of pairs for different things. I certainly can't wear my smallest pair, which is size 38, um, for, that I use for hard bouldering. I certainly can't wear them for a 20 pitch alpine route, for example. My feet would be in bits after that. <laughs> so I'm, t I'm wearing them for hard bouldering as small as I can get away with because there's more performance. I'm taking them off after every try. They're not staying on my feet. I tend to train in half a size bigger, 38 and a half. I've written it in pen so that I don't get confused. And then I also have another half size bigger than that for big alpine stuff. And although that sounds like, okay, you've got to buy three pairs of shoes. Well, that's true, but you're, you're spreading the wear across those different disciplines. So your alpine pair might last you years because you're only using them for a handful of routes. Your training pair, your mid-size pair, is going to wear it a lot faster because they're getting the bulk of the, the wear. One other thing I would say just to round off this vlog is be kind to your feet. You're going to use them for a long time. You're going to still be able to want to walk up a mountain when you're 70, 80, 90, hopefully. Um, so if you're 18 or younger than that and you're wearing tiny rock shoes and not taking them off when you don't need to have them on, which is in between your tries, then you're squashing your foot bones and it's really not a good idea. Wear a half size bigger, a size that's just that nice trade-off between performance and size. If the rock shoe fits your feet, that will lessen that trade-off to start with and you're gonna have something that is both snug on your feet and performs well, but is also not squashing your feet.